The Apple Watch is the most popular smartwatch in the world. In fact, it's the most popular watch in the world, full stop. Is there a good reason for this? I didn't think so until I got this. I've been using the Apple Watch SE for about two weeks now, and Black Friday's coming up, the holidays are coming up, so I thought now would be a good time to review this thing. I'll talk about the different features you get with this device, and because it's an SE model, what you're missing out on compared to the newer, more expensive models. If you've never had a smartwatch or an Apple Watch and you're debating whether or not you should get one, well, then this review is for you. All right, let's get started. So first off, how much does this thing cost? So there's a couple different factors that can influence the price of the watch. Whether or not you choose to get a cellular model and GPS versus GPS only, or if you decide to opt for the larger 44mm watch. Apple has a tool called the Apple Watch Studio that lets you pick your size, model, case color, band of your choice, and once you pick the watch configuration you like, you can see the price displayed below. I just chose the basic midnight 40mm GPS only with the default sport band. It's the cheapest Apple Watch configuration you can get, and uh, I got GPS only because I don't see myself using the cellular. The cellular model basically makes the Apple Watch more independent from the iPhone, so you can make calls and texts using a cellular Apple Watch without your iPhone nearby, but you do need to buy a separate data plan for it. I always have my phone on me, so I got the GPS only model. So this guy starts at 269 USD or 329 Canadian. But because it's a watch that's over two years old, there's frequently deals on it. And Black Friday's coming up, Apple will give you a $50 USD or $70 Canadian gift card for buying the watch from them. And it's 50 USD or 70 Canadian dollars off at Best Buy right now. Amazon also has a bunch of Black Friday deals, not just on tech, but in general. So I've left affiliate links in the description and comments below. And if you buy anything using that link, I get a small commission with no extra cost to you. And you get some cool deals, win-win. Okay, enough shilling, let's get back to the video. This is Apple's cheapest watch, but it really doesn't feel that way. This guy's made of aluminum and glass, and it feels pretty high quality all around. We'll see how it holds up down the line though. On the side, you get the speakers for your calling and stuff, and here we have a microphone, the side button, and the digital crown. Both buttons feel nice and tactile to use. Moving on to the back, Apple says this is a nylon composite back, basically plastic. But it honestly doesn't feel that cheap, and apparently it makes the watch a little lighter, so that's good. The watch itself isn't that heavy, honestly. I don't really have any complaints about the weight, although I do find the watch to be a bit uncomfortable to wear at times, but that's more of the band's fault. Not that I don't like the band though. Speaking of the band, this is just the default sport band that comes with the watch, although as mentioned before, you can buy the watch with different bands if you so choose. I like the band, and generally it's not a hassle to wear, the only thing is when it gets sweaty, it can get pretty uncomfortable. It's a pretty good band for everyday use, but if you're going to be working out a lot with this thing, maybe go for a different option. As for the looks of the watch, you'd expect it to look a little different from the nicer ones, but it honestly doesn't look that different. From a distance, the average person is not going to be able to tell that you have the SE, since when the screen's off, the glass is more or less the same shape as the Series 10. The only difference looks-wise with the screen is that the SE has bigger bezels, but it by no means looks ugly, and if you have a black watch face, it can be genuinely hard to tell. Essentially, the watch uses the same body design from the Series 4 to 6, which honestly still looks pretty nice in 2024. And I got my watch in the midnight color, and while it might look black, it's more of a dark blue color, kind of like the midnight on the iPhone 13 and 14. This matches quite nicely with my midnight iPhone 13, which also has that dark blue tone to it. Now let's talk about the durability. The watch is rated for water resistance, but it doesn't have a dust resistance rating, unlike the higher end models. I have slightly scuffed it from when I whacked it against the door accidentally once, but for the past two weeks, it's held up well. I know some people like putting cases and screen protectors on their Apple watches. Why? I feel like screen protectors are reasonable, but having a case just makes the thing bulky and I'd rather appreciate the watch in all its slim, gorgeous beauty. And you can buy Apple Care for this thing, and it's like 250 USD or 3 Canadian dollars a month. And in a world where a single streaming service can cost 10 to 15 dollars, I think that's a pretty reasonable price to pay for peace of mind. Now the screen on the Apple Watch SE is actually quite nice. It's an OLED, which means when pixels are black, that pixel is actually turning itself off. This is why the Apple Watch software has black backgrounds, to save battery. It's also while you save on battery life if you use a watch face with a black background. The screen gets pretty bright, up to 1000 nits, and newer watches do go to higher brightnesses, up to 2000 and even 3000 nits on the Ultra, but I've never felt that the watch screen wasn't bright enough to use in daily life. Okay, it's a bright sunny day, and I can, I can, see, I can, I can see this pretty well. Oh, nice battery percentage, by the way. As for the size, I have a fairly small wrist, so I chose the 40mm model, and I've never really thought that the screen was too small. The one thing that might bother some people is the lack of an always-on display. Higher-end Apple watches have a display that's, well, always on, which makes it easy to glance down at the watch and stuff. 
On the SC, you need to do a sort of wrist raise gesture to activate the watch. And while it generally works pretty well, sometimes on a rare occasion it doesn't work. And of course, if you're mid-conversation and you need to check on the time really subtly, you're going to look kind of rude if you're just wiggling your wrist around compared to a normal watch or a higher-end Apple watch where you can just glance down real quickly at the time, nice and subtle, very polite. Battery life on this thing isn't horrible. At first, it was actually pretty bad, but it seemed to have even out after about two weeks of use. Apparently, the battery life is worse early on because it's doing a bunch of indexing and learning your usage in the background, but now it's pretty good. Of course, you have to manage expectations. It's not going to be incredible and last a whole week, and it's not going to hold a candle to the Casio F91W, the goat of all watches. This thing... Seven year battery life. What I do is I just charge it throughout the day whenever I can, like if I'm working or if I'm sitting at a desk, and then I just wear it to sleep to do sleep tracking. If you don't intend on using the sleep tracking, you can just charge it overnight and it'll do just fine. Sometimes when I'm out and about, I will need to put the watch on low power mode to squeeze out a little bit extra juice, but I expect it to get better as I keep using the watch and it learns my usage patterns. Also, I should mention that even if the watch powers off, you can still check the time for up to 72 hours thanks to power reserve mode. Charging the watch is pretty straightforward, it's just this magnetically attached puck that in inductively charges this thing. I should note that you don't get a brick in the box, just a watch, a strap, and a charger. So if you need a power brick that works with the Apple Watch's USB-C charger, I've linked one down below as an affiliate link. I also bought this neat trifold charger that can charge your AirPods, iPhone, and Apple Watch together, and I've linked a similar one down below. Again, Amazon affiliate link. But yeah, battery life is enough to last about a day, and you shouldn't have problems as long as you charge it at some point. I charge it when I'm doing work or if I'm showering, and it works just fine for me. As for performance, well, it's a watch. This guy has the same processor as the Apple Watch Series A from 2022, which is pretty awesome, and it means this watch will probably still get about two more years of software support, which is pretty neat. But overall, the watch has been snappy, and the OS has been smooth with very minimal lag. The only bug I've encountered is sometimes the settings app crashes when I look at my battery settings, and the Spotify app has been janky at times, kind of stuttery and laggy, but other than that, it's been fairly smooth. Again, it's a watch and it does pretty well. Now let's talk about the features of the watch and I guess any Apple watch. Think of the Apple watch as the best iPhone accessory because you need an iPhone to set up an Apple watch. Now, if you're thinking about getting this for your kids, you still can. The little ones don't need an iPhone. You can just set the watch up on your iPhone and then give it to them. But yes, at some point you will need an iPhone to set this guy up. But pairing an iPhone with the watch is really easy and straightforward, and you can change almost all of your watch settings on your iPhone. Things like watch faces, notification settings, all of them can be changed on your iPhone, as well as your Apple Watch. Speaking of notifications, it's nice to be able to choose which notifications you get on your Apple Watch. Before, if my phone buzzed, I'd always have to go check it because, hey, maybe it's important, and then I might get sucked into social media. But now, I have it so that only important notifications go to my watch, and if I get a notification on my phone and I don't see it on my watch, then I know it's probably not important. It's been a neat little thing to help me stay a little less connected to my phone. The Apple Watch SE and most modern Apple Watches also have emergency SOS, fault detection, and car crash detection. No, I don't think I'll be testing any of those features out. But once I did fall off my bed though, and it triggered the fall detection, so I guess it works. If you have an elderly parent or something, I can see how this feature might be useful. This thing also helps track my atrocious sleep schedule, and I can get insights on my sleep, like how long I spent in REM, in deep sleep, etc. It's kind of cool, but I'm going to be honest, I don't really know what to do with this info, so I don't really care. But yeah, the big focus of this device is tracking and fitness. You can track your heart rate, you can track your workouts, it's pretty neat, and I can say it's helped motivate me to go on runs and stuff in an effort to close my fitness rings. It really gamifies fitness and being healthy, which is pretty cool. I also like the alarms on this thing. I live in a dorm, and I feel bad for always waking my roommate up with my loud alarms. This thing uses vibration motors, and it's kind of like having someone tap you awake instead of waking up to a loud sound, which is pretty nice. It does still play a sound, but it's a lot quieter than on the iPhone. Having access to phone calls and messages right on your watch is also pretty convenient, but they do drain your battery a decent amount. Voice typing on the watch is fairly accurate, but there's no keyboard, so you need to use the swipe keyboard to hand draw each letter one at a time, and it kind of gets tedious. But yeah, it's basically like having a mini phone on your wrist. You get quick access to stuff like your calendar, a calculator, your reminders. It's honestly pretty nice to have access to these things without having access to social media, because at the end of the day, devices like these are just tools that help you get the job done. And this thing also supports Apple Pay and whatever stuff you have in your Apple wallet, so it's really nice not to have to like take out your phone to like pay for stuff or scan your cards and whatever, and it also supports transit passes in some regions. So here in Ontario, we have these things called Presto cards, which is our transit card, and I just have it on my watch. So instead of having to take the card out of my wallet, I can just take my watch, tap it on the reader, I don't have to take anything out, put anything in my pockets. It's really convenient. I love it. It's great. 
I also like how I can use the Apple Watch as a viewfinder for my iPhone and I can control my camera on the iPhone through my Apple Watch just right on my wrist, and it's pretty neat. And if you ever lose your devices, you can use the watch to ping and find them. And I really like the Compass app. There's a feature called Backtrack that basically lets you record your walking path and retrace your steps if, say, you're in an unfamiliar place. You can also add waypoints, which are basically little markers on a map. So let's say you're at an event and you see the washroom. You might add a waypoint so you know where to find the washroom later. It's like having a real life mini map on your wrist, which is pretty cool. But yeah, there's loads more features on this guy I haven't talked about yet, so I'll probably make a video on it at some point, so be sure to subscribe for that. So those are the features you have. What features are you missing by going for the SE instead of a higher end model like the Series 10? What compromises are you making? Well, the SE is only available in aluminium finishes compared to the higher end watches, which are available in aluminium, stainless steel, as well as titanium. You miss out on that always on display we talked about earlier, and you get a screen that's not quite as bright as the other watches. The higher end watches also have advanced health features like being able to do an ECG, being able to tell you if you have sleep apnea, measuring your temperature, cycle tracking with retrospective ovulation estimates, and in some regions, a blood oxygen sensor. The SE also doesn't have a depth gauge while the higher end watches do, and it doesn't have a water temperature sensor. You also technically don't get double tap, but you can mimic the double tap functionality through accessibility and it works pretty well. You can use your watch by touching yourself, so that doesn't really count. Siri is also a bit better on the higher end watches. Oh, I just triggered my Siri on my iPad. No, go away. Siri is also a bit better on the higher end watches. You also get a better Find My experience in case you lose your iPhone. Also on the Apple Watch Series 7 and above, because it's a bigger screen, you get a on-screen keyboard instead of the swipe keyboard that is available on the SE. And that makes typing a lot easier. The Series 10 specifically also has speakers that let you play media like music, podcasts out loud. Compared to the SE and the speakers on this guy, they are only for like calling and playing like alarms and stuff. They're not for like playing media. Lastly, on the SE, you miss out on fast charging. That does sound like a lot of features missing, but generally the average person isn't going for dives regularly, and all these extra health features aren't really necessary unless you have specific needs. I feel like the only missing things that are relevant for me are fast charging and the always on display, otherwise everything else is simply nice to have, but again, not necessary for my smartwatch experience. Overall, this is a great first watch for people looking to dip their toes in the smartwatch world. It's my first smartwatch, and I was skeptical at first, but I think it really won me over. If you're looking for your first smartwatch or you're upgrading from like a Series 3 or something, I'd say it's worth it. You're getting most of the Apple Watch experience for a pretty appealing price. And again, there's always discounts going on. If you decided that the Apple Watch SE is right for you, again, consider buying it through the affiliate link in the comments below. I'd really appreciate it. Or if you already have an Apple Watch and you're looking for some accessories, those are also linked down below as well. All right, that's about it for this video. Consider liking and subscribing if you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one. Be awesome and stay techy. Bye. Also, also, I should mention that Watch powers off. Is it? Recording. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Think of the Apple Watch as the best iPhone accessory. Oh, there's my roommate. Now let's talk about the features. Now let's talk about the feet. Now let's talk about. It really gamifies the fitness aspect. It really gamifies. It really games. It really. It really gamifies fitness and the like. It really gamifies fitness and being healthy, which is pretty cool. But yeah, it's basically like having, but yeah, it's basically having, but yeah, it's like, and you can do stuff like Apple Pay. And this thing also supports Apple Pay and Press. Overall, this is a great first watch for people looking to dip their toes in the smartphone world. Overall, this is a great first watch for people looking to dip their tips. Overall, this is a great first watch for people looking to dip their toes in the smartwatch world. Hot two.